Now you listen to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from. Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. All right, hallelujah, Israel. Glory to the king. Y'all's good, isn't he? Hallelujah. Good to see y'all in the land of the living. In the land of the living. Y'all want some water, too? Oh, you want some water? Anybody else want some water? That was huge. I guess since we... That's since we pass them out, man. <laughs> That's all you're getting. Dang. Should have let that cat out of bed. All right, glory to the king. Y'all is good. Most high, but y'all, we bless you this morning for allowing us to come again to another one of your set apart times. Your holy Shabbat, Father, thank you for inviting us, invoking us, and calling us near. More than anything, thank you for the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus, and our names written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. We need you in this daytime and hour as we're fighting a spiritual warfare. We need our conscience and our understanding open so we can bring about a performance and also have victory over Satan's kingdom. So we thank you for all things. Speak to us your words of truth. Minister to us by the power of the Holy Spirit. We'll glorify and magnify your name with our lives as a sacrifice, a living sacrifice. In Yahshua's magnificent, wonderful name, hallelujah. You may be seated. Y'all ever remember over in the scripture how, let me start this way. How many times you read something in the word and thought you was reading it right? Until you heard somebody else expound on you, go, now wait a minute. I had it wrong all this time. You know, for instance, let me, let me give you this. Some, uh, over in Better Sheet, Genesis, Genesis. I had somebody write me and say, Pastor, I just don't understand what you're saying when you say a lot of stuff. So what are you talking about? I said, yeah, I think you're quoting the books or something, but you say this other language stuff. And, I said, you'll catch on in time. I always preface it and follow it up with the English. Uh, but anyway, over in Genesis, see, sisters never take this as a defense mechanism. Or that y'all was setting it up so you can be protected by your husband. See, when you, when you hear this statement right here, and thy desire shall be to your husband and he shall rule over thee. You don't take it as a protection, but the most high y'all use it as protection because if you stayed up under the umbrella and protection of your husband, then Satan can't get to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why? Because we learned from Adam. Yeah, he's the one who, who actually did the sinning, but Adam, his weak ass was sitting right there. Watching the whole show. And what did the most high reprimand Adam for? Because you hearken unto the voice of your wife. You're supposed to be the head. You're supposed to be the head. You just stayed listening to me this whole time. None of this wouldn't have been like this. 
Y'all believe that Most High had this thing? He, he could have went either way. This earth, man, we're not inhabiting all this earth like everybody think we are. It's, it's a pretty big earth. It's a pretty big earth for the amount of people that's on it. We're not nowhere near it. Tapping the resources completely. Well, we got a bunch of countries hoarding resources. Hmm? Watch this. This is how the greed of man works. How many billionaires we probably got in America? If we, would y'all say we have at least 20? At least 20, right? At least 20. All right? No, no, as I said, billionaires. So, one billionaire, one billionaire, y'all ready for this? One billionaire could give everybody in the United States of America one million dollars and still have enough money. There's only like 370 million people in America. Most of them, a million dollars won't even last them a month, though. Did y'all hear that? that? That's how greed is working. All these people are amassing all this money. Anybody ever heard of Yusuf? The boxer Yusuf that fight, that beat up, beat up Tyson Fury? He's a, a Ukrainian, I think he is. I think his name Alexander Yusik or something like that. He's a good boxer too, man. Good heavyweight. They asked him, they said, um, uh, why are you always giving your money away? He said, I got plenty of money. Money is the easiest thing in the world to make. He said, but I can't take it with me to the grave. He said, just give it, give it to the, the people that didn't need. I got plenty. Well, what kind of world would this be if everybody was like that? Now he's saying that way. He got all these butterflies over his eyes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because he just got out of the fight and stuff, and that's how he's talking. No wonder he beat up Tyson Fury. What a world, huh? Y'all learn anything last night? Learn a lot, didn't you? Y'all see the reason why I tell you these people ain't ready? They ain't ready. They, they're not ready. Well, ready or not. Hey, you got to go ahead and square this with yourself that we're the remnant. We're part of it. We're literally part of the remnant. Okay. All right, Elder Doug, you're going to do some adjusting because I sound like I'm back in, um, I don't know what I'm in. A fishbowl. McNabb says I'm in a fishbowl. How's that? Is I, am I clearing up? I still sound like I'm, nope, I'm not cleared up. I sound like I'm in a fishbowl. I can tell because my, my ears are going, woo, 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 woo. You can get painful, man. Listen, uh-oh, oh, it's clearing up. It's clearing up. It's, it's almost there. It ain't there yet, though. There's an echo. How's this? We're almost there. Woo, now my ears are not stressed. They doing pretty good. Ah, oh, look at that. Can y'all tell the difference? Y'all hear the difference? Huh? A little bit more? A little bit more. Nope. Mm -mm. A little bit more. I ain't asking you, James. You can't hear what for damn anyway. <laughs> James be up here on that stage playing. And I, I just told the brothers next to him, I said, listen. I told him sometimes, I said, James, he can't hear nothing, man. He, he, he can't hear no low frequencies at all. That's, that's why his stuff sounds like it's about to crack our ear. And it sounds perfect to him. And I got to tell James, turn it down, man. And he's right there, ear all in it, can't hear nothing. <laughs> Ears are working around loud stuff, huh? Uh-oh, look at that. Oh man, I may, I may sing. Oh no, I ain't gonna be doing no singing. 
All right, I'm gonna preach and teach. How about that? All right, Isaiah 57, 21. We're gonna go a few avenues here today, but the main thrust of this message is it's about witchcraft. All right. But it's gonna show you, you're gonna learn something different about one verse that we've read. I can't tell you and quote it how many times. And it's amazing when you look behind these words, how it influences and changes the whole meaning of everything. You follow me? So there's no peace, say my God, to the wicked. The different kinds of evil spirits of Ahab and Jezebel. Now, you know you can't have a Jezebel without Ahab. A lot of people don't know that Ahab was more wicked than Jezebel. Literally. They were more wicked than Jezebel. How many of y'all sisters know what they do with them placentas when y'all leave the placentas in the hospital? Anybody know? What do they do? Well, now when y'all talk, y'all have to understand there's like almost 200 people in here and you just one little old person whispering to yourself. Shout a little bit. What else? Yeah, and what else, I'll tell you what else they do. They send them to makeup companies. And, and most people don't know they run around wearing women's placentas on their faces when they're using foundation. And then. Didn't know that, did you? Satan be after y'all sisters hard, boy. Mm. I ain't talking about y'all because y'all set apart, but there's, there's some people out there that's listening to me. They be after hard. And for some reason, he's got a fetish with every part of a child. Every part of a child. Well, they up on, they giving heat on Capitol Hill about this shooting of Donald Trump. How that was just, any, anybody, know, everybody in America knows that was just a flat out inside job. That's a national debacle. Ted Cruz and them and and uh, John Kenny up there is just laying into their rear end. And, and of course, you know everybody, you know what they're doing, right? Everybody's stonewalling. Well, nevertheless, we're going to go ahead and talk about Satan's kingdom, okay? You can tell when someone has for unforgiveness in their hearts. They're constantly pouting. They have unstable emotions. And we know after dealing with um, spiritual warfare... That bitterness and unforgiveness is huge. It's really, really huge. In almost every aspect of spiritual warfare. All right? Examples of Ahab. Ahab, if you, you, you know, if you associate some of these, these are some of the examples when you read about Ahab that you come up with. Full of fears, sexual lust, insecurity, self-pity, fantasy, depression, jealousy, envy, hopelessness, Guilt and shame. Under the umbrella of Jezebel, stubbornness, self-will, selfishness, confrontation, control, and possessiveness. Now, neither one of these are gender neutral. You, follow me? you, you can have either one of them. Believe it or not, a man can have just as much as Jezebel as, as a woman can have Ahab. And matter of fact, this generation has pretty much done flipped the roles. If you look at it, they pretty much done flipped the roles. Hatred and resentment, murder and bitterness. Now, schizophrenia. Everybody ever heard that before, schizophrenia? Ah, yeah. I'm going to say this again a little bit later, too. But I'm going to ask everybody, uh, if you don't have one, make sure you try to get one. Because it's just time for us to revisit Pigs and Apollo again. That's a real good book. This thing is loaded. It's a good book to revisit because, um, you know, if you don't do deliverance, if you don't do deliverance after a period of time because you think you arrive, then those sophisticated demons has done come in and helped you in your arrival. I'm serious, man. These things, these things are highly intelligent. You know, they've seen you somewhere before. That means all of us. You know how I many billions of people have been born on this earth? They've seen you before, all of us. But I tell you, man, the information is the same. They still, their action, their character, their nature is the same. 
Now, schizophrenia always starts off with rejection, but the catalyst is unforgiveness and bitterness. Y'all get that, right? Now, schizophrenia, listen, a lot of them, I'm telling you, there's a lot of people in America running around undiagnosed. Some of you are undiagnosed. That's not a negative and derogatory statement because you hear the word schizophrenia. You know, they use it as a mental illness out there, and then the first thing they do is want to pump you up with a bunch of drugs and stuff. Huh? But, I mean, after we get finished, I'm sure you're probably going to see some of this, all right? That's the whole idea. Because how can you ever repent and, get, and do things the right way if you don't never know what you need to repent for? <laughs> Hallelujah. In time spirits. Since Ahab was more wicked than Jezebel, we got to start with the statement that was said to Saul. We're going to spend a lot of time on this verse right here. 1 Samuel 15, 23. And it says, for rebellion. Y'all hear that? Rebellion. Was Jezebel rebellious? Was Ahab rebellious? All right. Rebellion. And that word rebellion, look what rebellion starts off with. Bitterness. Who would ever associate rebellion with bitterness? When you look behind that word, that's what it is. Bitterness that is figuratively, rebellion, concretely bitter or rebellious. And it goes back, bitter, most, rebel, rebellion, rebellious. So when someone's rebellious, under, under the spirit of rebellion, the, pe the person is bitter. That's the reason why they're rebelling. Think about that for a second. Does good to look behind words, don't it? All rebellion starts with bitterness. Being bitter. Mm -mm -mm. For rebellion is as the sin of what? And you know, witchcraft is under, man, you can, you can have all different types of synonyms that are associated with witchcraft. All right? But look what it says. Divination. Including the three or oracle, divination, divine sentence, witchcraft. So what is that definition telling us? When it's getting down to the point where it says oracle, when it's talking about divination, divine sentence, that means people are uttering words. Are y'all listening? Are they uttering words that is acute to divination? Sentences, phrases. This thing is deep. Example of different kinds of witchcraft. Listen real quick. In Ezekiel 13, 1, it says, And the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy and say unto them that prophesy of their own hearts. So anytime someone is speaking in there, speaking of their own heart, they're, div they're divining. They're in divination. Hear you the word of Yahweh. Thus said the master Yahweh, woe to the foolish prophets who are following their own spirit. That's a lot of that goes on in, in America. People get up and they don't, they don't never ever say, nowadays people don't say, thus say the Lord. They just, you know, I'm telling you, this is the way it is. Hallelujah. And they throw all that in. The next thing you know, off and running, you go. That's the reason why we spend all this time putting the word in front of you. A long time ago, I started using PowerPoint so it could keep your heads up rather than down. So you can see the word for yourself. You understand what I mean? And everybody can stay more engaged. Are you following me? They probably wished I was using PowerPoint in Dallas too. Uh-oh. Thus said the master, y'all, woe to the foolish prophets who are following their own spirit. Whose spirit? Without having a vision. So they're speaking from their own conscience. They're speaking from their own volition. They're speaking from the very thoughts of their own mind and trying to convince you that it's really y'all. Oh, Israel, your prophets have been like foxes among ruins. You have not gone up into the gaps. Neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the 
battle in the day of Yahweh. They have seen, look at this, vanity and what? Lying divination. See, now there's somebody using words, using phrases, using, using the unction of their own heart and their own spirit to speak as if it's coming from Yah, but it's not coming from Yah. See what we learned about this verse already? We learned enough. We can just say hallelujah, Shabbat Shalom. Just from this. Look what it said. They have seen what? Vanity and what? Lying divination. So you remember when that spirit came before y'all when he says, who shall I sin to persuade our help? You remember that? This spirit said, I'll go. I'll send me and I'll go. And it went and it divined or it put divination in all the mouths of the prophets. And then the prophets begin to speak and prophesy of their own mind, of their own conscience. And see, who would ever thought that this was divination? Are y'all hearing it? Yes, now I got a question. How much divination you've been practicing? Yes, Man, y'all, come on. I know it's the truth because I ain't never heard this myself. I just got it this morning. So you ain't read in no book. <laughs> no, you didn't. I'm sitting a bit going, whoa. Wow. Yeah. Woo wee. Rebellion, bitterness, the sin of witchcraft is divination. And here's an example of it. Saying Yahweh have said and Yahweh have not sent them. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. In other words, you're up speaking, they will hope, you would hope that you'll get an amen corner. People are saying hallelujah and, and agreeing with you and Yahweh ain't said nothing. Isn't that what Hannah and I did with Jeremiah? When he had the stocks on him and stuff? I am a prophet of y'all. I'm the one that's telling Jeremiah, no, he ain't. No, he ain't. No, he ain't. Amazing, isn't it? See, here is an example of someone trying to get everyone to see what they want people to see. Not what Yahweh wants you to see. What they want you to see. 13.7, I have not seen a vain vision and have ye not spoken a lying divination. What is this again? Lying divination. Not just divination, a lying divination. Just letting you know it didn't come from y'all. Y'all hearing it, right? It didn't come from y'all if it's a lying divination, right? Whereas ye say, Yahweh saith it, albeit I have not spoken. You getting this? Therefore, thus saith Yahweh Elohim, because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies. How can you see lies? The seeing and the lies is you can perceive lies. Are you following me? Therefore, behold, I am against you, O Yahweh, saith Yahweh Elohim. And my hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and divine lies. How many folks divining lies out here today? <laughs> See, under spirit of witchcraft. It's the spirit of witchcraft. Sure, the Torah, the Torah explains divination using curious arts and all this other stuff, but it, it also is speaking about this too. See, a false prophet is somebody associated with this same spirit right here. And you're going to find out later on, we're going to get to a very key point. You see, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag just a little bit. Just a little bit right now. All right. The reason why the most high of y'all is against lying divination is because it's usually by the spirit that the Holy Spirit, when he gives a prophet something to say, it's pretty much coming through almost the same medium. It's something spoken, something revealed. And y'all don't want his people hearing falsehoods. While somebody is under the guise and ospreys that they're righteous in front of you. See, the reason why that y'all is against the false prophets, the false teachers, anything false, is because now you're acting like what you're, what you're getting is actually coming from y'all. And it didn't come from y'all. It's coming from yourself. You follow me? 
And now you're deceiving the people trying to make them to believe something that is not so. Something you don't conjure up in your own heart and mind. Yeah, you follow me? Look at this. And my hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people. Neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel. Most of y'all could be purging a lot of these diviners away from us. Better thank y'all for it if he's doing it. Neither shall they enter into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am Yahweh, your Elohim. See, false prophecies and false prophets are actively trying to make people see their own vain vision. The Christian church got it bad. Everybody prophesying out there. Everybody prophesying out there. In Ezekiel 13, 10, because, even because they have, what's that word? They've done what? They, they, because they have seduced my people. Y'all know what seduced mean, right? Hmm? They enticed, they allured. Come on, y'all know what sedu they have seduced. Uh, they, they done it under a uh, not, not a righteous auspice, they done on a bad auspice. Yes, Seduce my people. Saying peace, and there was no peace, and one built up on a wall, and lo, others doubled with it with untempered mortar. Meaning, there's some stuff just sitting on the wall, as soon as the rain comes, it'll fall right off of it. Yeah. It's not even going to hold. What good is it to set up there and stuck on a wall, and, and, and as soon as it rains, uh, it's going to fall right off of it. Because the mortar wasn't true. Uh oh, what am I? All right, so look at this. From the book Dangerous Prayers, page 256, one of them spiritual warfare books, right? Listen to this. I told Summer, I just said, I, I, I said, I can't type all this. I said, I'll be here. I don't wasted 20 minutes this morning when you can just get in here. <laughs> What it took me, it took me 20 minutes to type. She typed it in less than a minute. I could have called you, couldn't I, Daryl? No. <laughs> 50 words a minute, huh? Two words a minute. <laughs> what you laughing at? You can't type. <laughs> look at, listen, look, listen real close, okay? Very closely. You cannot read the Bible and not come away with an understanding that Yah hates false prophecies and false prophets. Because you have to understand, these people have influence. Okay? As a matter of fact, the penalty for false prophecy in the Old Testament was actually death. So now how many people want to get up and speak of your own mind? I'll be praying that y'all just start killing folks. Just start killing folks. I mean, he did that with Ananias and Sapphira. He, did. he killed them dead, standing right on their feet. Pow! Think about that. This is how harshly Yah looks at the sin of leading people astray using false prophecies. So why does Yah hate their, the altar of a false prophecy so much? The answer lies in understanding the fact that Yah uses the, here it is, the medium of prophecy because there's a spirit of prophecy he uses the medium of prophecy to communicate his will to his children on earth see how they like one and the same and when somebody come and saying y'all said and thus said or you act like you in the stead of a prophet and you're speaking for him this is man y'all can't stand that and there's nothing more important on earth than discovering y'all's will a false prophecy gives Satan the power to control and drive people, especially y'all's children, in the wrong direction. Listen close. Imagine him being told by a false prophet who to marry only to discover later on that y'all had nothing to do with it. Can you imagine you soldiers, you got uh, some of these uh, jack legs, so-called men of y'all, all of a sudden they tell, well, I think you ought to, they didn't say they said, Lord, they just trying to influence you. I think you ought to be, you'll be a good match and you need to marry him. That's just his opinion. And of course, you want to do y'all's will, don't you? You want, you want to be pleasing. 
you want to be obedient, find out that you end up marrying a, a, somebody that's a devil in the congregation. That'd be bad, wouldn't it? Whoo, that is bad. Y'all didn't have nothing to do with it. That's why I don't never put no marriages together. Did you hear what I said? I don't never put marriages together. That, you know, that I'm sure that people can figure this thing out. You know, I like you and you like me. So what are we going to do about it? <laughs> Pretty much. Don't sit up and lie and say you love when you don't know nothing about them. You can say, I love you as a sister, but you don't love them as no wife because you don't know. Them. Never mind. We're going to move on here, okay? Today, this is summed up with someone pushing or drumming up a false narrative. Another example of witchcraft and divine and false prophecies, pastors, ministers, and et cetera, is bitterness is the driving force of it all, Israel. Bitterness, 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 and being bitter is the driving force of it all. Jeremiah 23, 13 said, I have seen the folly of the prophets in Samaria. They prophesy in Baal. They prophesy in who? Baal. They prophesy in Baal. And cause my people, Israel, to do what? Why? Because somebody that's up speaking and act like they have the spirit of prophecy, the people don't want to miss Yah. So they're assuming that these people are speaking right. Yah still tells us to try spirits. He still have taught us to test everything. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He also says in Renew Covenant, let no man deceive you. Don't let nobody deceive you. So when we get deceived, the first thing we want to do is get offended that we were deceived. And you had, you had part of it yourself. Sometimes, believe it or not, you want to be deceived. You know why? Because this person could be playing your tune. You could have some secret bitterness in you that solidifies what they're saying and then guess what? You agree with them. Now you do. So much for reproof and rebuke then, isn't it? See, if you're bitter and you're getting reproved and rebuked, guess what? You, that, man, that reproof and rebuke ain't gonna take. As soon as you get rebuked, that wall goes up. That fortress comes up. You start to insulate and protect. Uh-oh. From someone that loves you. And then somebody come over and tell you, man, I don't think you should have been reproved or rebuked on that, man. And then, and then, yeah, you right, man. See, there you go. You got your prophecy. You got your exactly what you wanted. And off and running, you go. And you never pay attention to the character and spirit that you just received. So then you go off into rebellion. Anybody ever been rebellious against authority before? No, where'd you get that from? Did you ever check bitterness? Did you ever check for bitterness? Did you ever check for an offense? No, you just sanctioned bitter. You just sanctioned rebellion. You would never said that you are a diviner. You would never said that you're full of witchcraft. You wouldn't even call it sin. Usually what we do is we justify behavior. Yeah, man, I'm insulating and protecting myself from you. Well, who's protecting you from you? Okay. But these people that prophesy and bail, they cause Yah's children Israel to err, to go off the paths. I've also, I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery and they walk in lies and they strengthen the, also the hands of the evildoers. How do you strengthen the hands of the evildoer? Well, you agree with them. From, uh, the evil, and that none of return from his wickedness they all, there are all of them unto me as Sodom. Now wait, why does he keep on mentioning Sodom again, man? And look at this. And the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Now we all know the story. 
of Sodom and Gomorrah, but it keeps coming up. It comes up. It comes up all over the scripture. Therefore, thus saith Yahweh of hosts concerning the prophets, behold, I will feed them with wormwood and make them to drink the water of gall. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land. Well, look at that word profaneness, a hypocrisy, a pollution, a godliness. And it's also what? Feminine in nature. Are y'all listening? Sometimes men can be more feminine than women by running their mouth. Mm -hmm. First Timothy 4 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times. Are we in the latter times? Well, some are going to depart from the what? Faith, giving heed to what kind of spirits again? Seducing, 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 entice, allure, beguile, seducing spirits and teachings or doctrines of devils. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, just like we've seen in the definition. Having, it, having been branded, I used the actual, I think the scriptures, no, that's, that's the scriptures. Uh, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having been branded on their own conscience. Branded on their own conscience. The King James says, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. But evil men and imposters, meaning seducers, shall go on to the worst leading astray and being led astray. In other words, even in this end time, we've been warned about divining. Divination. People are trying to lead you astray from y'all. Lure, entice, beguile, unstable souls. But these things have I written unto you concerning them that I'm writing to you concerning the folks because there are people that seduce. Sorry, folks, there are people in Israel that seducers. If it wasn't, it wouldn't be written in this book. Yes, it is. That, that's why he writes this. There are some seducers. Seducer, wrong, safely, go astray, deceive, err, seduce, wander, be out of the way. End time prophecy warning. And unto the angel of the church of Thyatira write these things, saith the son of Yah, who have his eyes like a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know your works and your love and service and faith and your patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. So far, man, well, I'm glad we're doing pretty good, ain't we? Right now, y'all better stand up there telling us all they went. Now, if we were standing in front of him, we wouldn't be doing what we doing this. And on the inside, we'd be like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> now, we're standing out of a few things against thee. Now, that's the part we don't want. <laughs> now, wait a minute. We were doing pretty good. Let's just go back right here for a second. You said you, you ain't going to remember anything. <laughs> You're doing pretty good. Now, all of a sudden, the bottom going to come out of you. Nevertheless, I got a few things against you, all right? Because you suffer that woman who? Jezebel, which calls herself a what? Prophet and teaches and to do what? Seduce my servants. Isn't that something? You allowed this. You didn't correct it. You didn't reprove it. You didn't rebuke it. You didn't set it down. You didn't admonish. You didn't warn. But you permitted this. That's what I got against you, the most high y'all says. See, I mean, you're doing pretty good. Look at you, man. I mean, come on. Man, man, your works, your charity, your service, your faith, your fidelity, man, your patience, man, your long suffering, your works, man, and the last to be more than the first. You was doing that in the beginning, but man, you are really done poured it on in the end. But this is what I got against you. You just like Ahab. 
You scared of Jezebel. You'll sit up there and let some people get seduced and won't say a word. You'll sit up there and let witchcraft run and won't say a word. Uh, now we're standing up a few things to get you because you suffered, meaning you permitted the woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my service, to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. You even led them into this. You know it's wrong, and you, you know it's wrong, and yet you did nothing about it. And I gave her space to repent for her fornication, her idolatry, her worship of other mighty ones or Elohims. Fornication, I keep telling y'all, man, fornication ain't what, that, that's, a, that's really a bad translation, bad word. Because they're trying to make you always think here in this English language that has something to do with, with sex. Why, they, why didn't y'all just come down on Abraham for having fornication with Hagar? See, that, that's the Catholic institution to make sure they're trying to sway at the false prophets that they are. And they're, and, they're, and they're leading you to believe that there's nothing wrong for you having wooden crosses and gold crosses around your neck and stuff. And you got dead bishops as, as doorstops in your churches and homes and everything else. You got praying hands up on the pulpit and, and on the mantle in your house. And you got all this idolatry and stuff and, time, and hugging statues and praying to Mary and doing roses and that. They had to change the definition. Because if they didn't change the definition, how could they keep you in idolatry? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation except they repent of their deeds. Now he's trying to get them to turn from their deeds. Huh? Trying, trying to steal something. Unless you repent and turn from your wicked deeds. See, the end time spirit, man, y'all ought to be careful of people who's trying to seduce you and, and move you away from y'all. Hmm? You ever heard this? And I marvel that you're so soon removed from the faith. It's astonishing, isn't it? And I will kill her children. With death. That's the most I got right here. Hmm. And all the churches, all the assemblies shall know that I am he which searches the reins of the hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your verse. Now you also don't deceive yourself. You can go ahead and get on the middle ground and don't do nothing. And you're still going to be judged for not doing anything. Think about this for a second. To them to know to do good and do it not is what? Sin. How many of y'all know to do good and it's in your hand to do it, but yet you won't do it? Uh -oh. oh. Are you serious? Oh. Mm. Mm -mm. I'm afraid of y'all, boy. I'm going to make sure that I ain't standing next to you. But unto you, I say, and unto the rest of Thyatira, as many as have not this teaching, this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, they have not known the what? If you was seduced and deceived, many of you wouldn't know it. That's why the Most High Yah raises up prophets and pastors and everybody to fight and argue because these people are trying to persuade your mind through some type of false narrative that they've been created. And I'm saying, man, they're speaking lies. They're divine and they're, these are straight up devils. Today, the church don't want nobody fighting nobody. And, and, and the most I just got finished telling all of us, you let Jezebel be permitted. I, 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 I know I just read that. I, I, I know, I know I read that. What I read that at? I know I read that. Now we're standing up a few things against you because you suffer or you permitted that woman Jezebel to call herself a providence to teach and seduce. How, how you suffer? How you permit that? When you hear it, you don't say nothing about it. 
You don't reprove it. You don't rebuke it. You don't correct it. You don't even try to recover your brother because if it's left out there in the atmosphere unchecked, you got these weak minds that's going to believe it. Don't tell me that some of us don't have the power of influence. Yes, we do. It's a human thing. If you see me going to the idol's temple and stuff, and, and, and you know I'm going in there and stuff, most of you wouldn't question the reason why I'm going in there. Well, pastor, he know what he's doing. Instead of, why are you in here? Never mind. See what I'm saying? If you see me sitting down at the table, and there's nothing but unclean food sitting up there, and, and you just come over and sit down too, and, and you see me take a bite of unclean food, man, you... Well, he doing it. Well, he doing it. Are y'all hypocrites better come on because you know good and damn well some of you are just like that. Instead of being under the spirit of y'all said, hey, ain't that unclean? What you doing? Then I'll get up and start, well, hold on, let me divine to you the narrative here for a second. You see, the book says that whatever is sold in the shambles, in the marketplace, eat it, as it was said before, you know, and we under that renewed covenant, and you'll go, good, fry up some pork rinds, and let's get going. <laughs> Instead of saying, you know, pastor, let, let me just go ahead and, and tell you the truth right here. We need to get some deliverance, because you're full of shit right now, you know that? <laughs> <laughs> But that's what we need to be doing. I don't know what spirit you up under, but we're going to get that thing up out of you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Some of you can't wait for somebody to go sin so you can justify your sinning. Uh, I'm telling the truth. Yeah, I am. It's been in your mind all this time. And all you need is one false prophet to justify it. And off and running we go. Oh boy. Says, see, see what happens? What happened? You're supposed to always keep the word of Yah first and foremost in you. Man is fallible and flawed. Yah ain't. Sure, it would be nice if you could come with some scripture too. Man, what, you know what the word says this, man. Oh, Leviticus 11. What, what happened to you? Well, Paul said, Paul didn't say that. The show is. See, I'm telling you, you better know your heart. Because if it's something you want to do, that spirit that's in there going to start ministering to your conscious, that weak conscious. And then you're going to get in a justify. Well, first you'll rationalize just for a second and you'll justify because it's something your flesh want to do. Hey, y'all see passed out. Man, me and the brothers, man, we out on a ministry trip. Hey, man, we can go to the whole house, man. Judah did it. <laughs> and y'all be, let's go, Pastor. <laughs> Instead of saying, what the hell is wrong with you? Going into a damn whole house. No, 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 no. And a hell to the no, no, no. Yeah, I'm telling the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, when Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, he says, be ye followers of me even as I am also 
a following Messiah. Now the Messiah got whores in the lineage. And a, and, a, and a Messiah was a friend of publican and sinners. But he didn't go to the boom boom docks. He didn't go to the red light district to go save folk. See what I'm talking about? These are just a few analogies so that you don't get deceived. Somebody could entice. And you know the worst thing about it? Somebody could entice you say, hey man, come over here and listen to this. When we try to protect you, don't eat off other tables. But you come listen to this. What if you go over and listen to this and you already offended at me because you don't like the way I preach? I don't like his tone. You know what I mean? How many times I'll be walking up down this aisle and the devil say, oh, here he come. He looking at you. You know what you've been doing. He gonna call you out. I ain't never called out number one person in all these years I've been preaching. I called out just one person all these years I've been preaching. I don't make a habit of it. Sometimes I be walking and most I be downloading stuff to them. Whoa. Okay. All right. The one person I did call out, they were sitting there in the back of the assembly of the church, right? And I'm up here preaching, mind my own business, in the zone and stuff, and all of a sudden, they come downloaded. I picked up that chair in the pulpit, and I threw it back there, tried to not take your damn head off. Now everybody's wondering, why you throw that chair and try to take his head off? He ducked and missed it, too. I said, because you are beating your wife. He goes, ah! fell down on the ground and started screaming and hollering, ah! oh, y'all, please, God, please. You remember that, Dick and Bell? You wasn't there. Teach saying you remember? You hear that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm up here just preaching. I go by and pull a pig, pick up that chair, and go, bam! <laughs> but see, what if that happened today? Oh, you know it passed out. He throwing chairs at people. He got a spirit on him. Look at that spirit. To hell that I just told the truth. And when I'm talking about beating wife, I'm talking about beating her unconscious. That's what I'm talking about. And I didn't miss it either. That man got on his face. Do you remember that, Mother Carol? Crying out to the Father. I want to go back there and put an elbow drop. Flying elbow on the back of his neck. <laughs> hmm? Now who want to be the man of y'all? Oh, never mind. See, but I, but I knew it was there. See, Israel, I'm telling you again, you see sin, iniquity, and transgression. You see somebody divining or using divination by speech. You can't be permitting that stuff. You got to actually speak so that you don't allow anybody else to be seduced. By those spirits. Uh-oh. I didn't say keep keep going. You understand what I mean? Now where we at? Right here? Right there. Which one? Oh, we done did kill, right? But I say unto you, and to the rest of the entire as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan. So Satan has depths. Are you following me? As they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. But that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Now I want some of that. <laughs> I want that right there. I know it, it sounds like it ain't going to never come, but it's coming, Israel. Y'all sure? Is literally going to bring the new Jerusalem down. And he's going to be king over all the earth. And we're going to be ruling all over this world. I mean, look how America is set up. So you got America set up as a state, right? Or the, the United States. It's one nation with 50 states, right? And in those states, 
you have what? Counties, parishes. Is that right? That's right, right? And look how many, how many counties are in just Tennessee alone? A bunch, that's a lot of ruling. And then each, each one of those counties got a governor. Don't you want to be the governor, brother Ron? I bet you make a good governor. <laughs> but y'all see what I mean? That's a lot of ruling in this earth right here. And plus, it's going to be nice because this, this, all these nations are going to be serving us. Yeah, again, I don't even think we're, we, we, there's no way you, it can even enter into our mind what y'all's done prepared for us. It just can't. It's just, I'm telling you, he done done it. You got to be able to see this vision just like you see lies. You see a lie clearly, don't you? And you never pay attention to the nature it put on you. Uh-oh. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to sheaves. Even, I, even as I receive of my father. And I will give him the morning star. He that have an ear, let him hear what the spirit says unto the assemblies. Now, y'all seen this damn abominable stuff called the Olympics, right? And all this Dionysius worship. I didn't even see the video yet. I just saw pictures and I go. I saw the pictures and knew clearly what was going on. And then Paris apologizes. We didn't mean to offend nobody. Bullshit, you already put it out there. You know exactly what you was doing. It's all that Dionysus worship. And they had, look, look. Now, Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper painting ain't accurate. But it still offended the Christians because look. Look what they got up there. Drag city. Just drag city. And then look at that thing. They did this on the biggest stage in the world. The Olympics. Opening ceremonies. And they say, we sorry. Yeah, you are sorry. And you meant to. You're not going to tell me you're going to set up all that stuff. You didn't mean, look, that spirit has done went out and defiled more people than what they think. More people. How do you think these end time spirits are going to work? All you got to do is open up your eye gate to it. If you ain't got the Holy Spirit, no defense mechanism for what you got going on, man, those spirits will come in. What protects us is the Holy Spirit. But these, these people in the world, they're wide open. All kind of unclean spirits went out of that little ceremony right there. And these people soaking and immersing themselves in it. I, so like I said, I'm going to say it again. I know I've been, it's probably about the fifth time I said, I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. And I don't care, I'm still going to say it again. We go through the airports and we see all these abominations, bald headed men with bat wing eyes and beards, lipstick on, hairy legs. I'm looking and going, that is nasty. Then they turn around and look at you. I say, that's right, that's what I said. <laughs> And I'm like, man, this is so vexing. This is literally vexing. I told the people down in Dallas, I said, you know what? Y'all live in this city, don't you? All these modern day conveniences. You love it, don't you? Huh? And guess what? Now your soul don't even get it vexed at looking and seeing the wicked. Your spirit has done developed toleration. Now, you look at sin, and, and sin don't even appear sinful no more. I'm giving you the same warning that the prophets give. And now, you, can, you see these drag queens every day, and you walk right past them. Sometimes you even say hi to them. 
because they're nice and they're kind. The book still says that y'all is angry with the wicked every day. That's what the book still says. See, now it, it ain't sinful no more. It's just a way of life to you. Your soul don't get vexed. You're at ease inside. There's no correction, no reproof. They dirty, you dirty. We come out of the woods, we see this, and we're like, this is a damn shame. Ranger was telling me, man, this damn steward just kept passing by me. I said, steward, he just kept passing by me, that homosexual thing. Blah. And one day he touched me, he said, man, don't touch me again. I said, yeah, man, you don't want them transferring experience. <laughs> There's one thing about them homosexuals, boy, they love touching. How you doing? Get your damn hand off me before I break your knuckle. I'm just saying, if they come and approach in your space, you don't have to go start it now. <sighs> but see what I'm talking about? And you know the world, they defend that mess. The whole world is becoming Sodom and Egypt. The whole entire world. That's why the Most High Yah keeps again and keep plowing it. Y'all better come out of her. You better be ye separate as say of Yah. You better touch not the unclean thing. Then he said, I would receive you and I'll be an Elohim unto you. Oh, never mind. Oh, yeah, I'm telling you. But, but now then you got the diviners over there telling you, oh, you got people trying to keep you in the bondage and trying to rule over you with fear. Well, the fear of y'all is the beginning of wisdom. And to depart from iniquity is understanding. To obey. You need to obey. You need to obey. No, it's just that I haven't lost my Holy Spirit. I know, I know sin when I see it. Uh oh, you can't even define it no more. See, how, see how wise y'all is. See how wise he is. Your cities are burned. Your houses are left to you desolate. Ain't that what he says? And if y'all didn't even leave a small remnant, we all would be just like that. And here we are living set apart, one of the last beacons of light. In this earth. And you got people trying to extinguish your fire. Man, the real Last Supper, the biblical Last Supper was no party for inclusiveness, nor an open table, but the most exclusive occasion in remembrance of those who had repented and left their former lives. And then the few would follow later, meaning the remnant. That's who was invited to that Lord's Supper. If you notice, everybody was in there was people who had left everything. See, the message still don't change. No matter where you look, you still see, you, you, you still see it, hear it, the same thing. Uh-oh. What's that man giving exchange for a soul? I'm going to live in Houston. I'm going to live in Dallas. Big city. Big city night. The hate is real, Israel. Satan hates you. See, he know that. See, T.D. Jakes and Benny Hinn, Geno Jennings, and, and Cliff Lodal and all these other uh, false prophets, they, they know, Satan know that them ain't going to get you. You got to have somebody. And men of your own self shall arise. Speaking perverse things in which they ought not to draw away disciples after them own selves. See, you don't keep your spirituality up. You don't stay spiritually sensitive. I mean, you're a hypocrite that you, you, you live better around the saints, but when you wake the saints, you ain't got no strength. I hope it's not. I hope it's not so. I hope you still got the same love and faith and charity and fidelity for the most high y'all when ain't nobody around. Because I'm going to tell you one thing. There's never nobody around. He's always around. Yeah. 
You want to want to live right in front of man, but then want to live like hell in front of y'all. Somebody getting touched on this message, though, isn't it? Y'all remember? Y'all know who that girl is, right? Simone Biles, right? She dominating the Olympics again. She got more medals than anybody has ever been in the Olympics. She's 27 years old and still dominating. 27 years old is like me going out there uh, having a track meet with Usain Bolt. At the make, because usually the gymnasts are extremely young. And you got all these people, these, these women coaches of gymnastics and all these coaches, they mad as hell. We got to change the rules. They want the rules changed all because of her. Because everything, every event she goes into, she dominates the dang thing. So let's bitch and change the rules. Uh, isn't that amazing? And the world is mad at her too. Y'all know the reason why, especially the women. You know the reason why these Jezebels are mad at her? Bro, Mark, you don't know the reason why the Jezebels are mad at her? They mad at her because she's married to an NFL player. And she, she, she gets online and tells people, my husband is the prize. She got plenty of money, but she said, my husband is the prize. Boy, that's, that's, that's a dying breed of women, isn't it? Especially to be out there on that platform talking like that. No wonder y'all got up dominating everything. They mad because they can't figure out how she does all these flips that can't nobody else do. She a damn Israelite. You know how it is. How many of y'all ever done something challenging and then you look at it and you go, I wonder if I can add a little something, something to this. You ain't never did that? Who ever jumped off the porch before? When he was a little boy. That was fun. Like, man, I got to get to the wonder. <laughs> Anybody ever did that? I was living in an apartment complex and I was like, I'm going to the second floor. <laughs> See? And if I could have got on the roof, I'd have jumped on from the roof. But I couldn't get to the roof. We just jump out of the second floor, just jump out and roll and hey, just flying. Do 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 do, and do it again, and again, and again, and again. Wouldn't dare let our mom and daddy see it. We would not let mother and father see it because they would get all over us, boy. Hmm? They're like some of you little honorary people. When you're amongst each other, you are cussing each other out. As soon as mom and daddy come around, you're... <laughs> They're not telling the truth. Like you were big. So that's the only thing she's doing. She get out here in gym next. She's like, man, if I can do a quarter turn, I, can, I, get, I guarantee you, I can probably make this into another full turn. See, right now, the limitation is quarter time, but I guarantee if I give a little bit more, but I, and then they see it and they freak out. Like Mother Carol said this morning, it makes no difference if she have a bad landing, she still get first because of the degree of difficulty in what she was doing. They can't pass it up. Like, and then coach said, this ain't fair. We got to change the rules. Change the rules. No black folks. <laughs> Everybody know black folk can jump? <laughs> but isn't that crazy? Soon as somebody doing something. When Michael Phelps is winning all those swimming awards, they didn't say, change the water in the pool. I, that's what I was doing. I was rooting for him too. USA! 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 Man, this wicked country is something else, though, man. The whole world's wicked, isn't it? 
We're going to get back to the word. If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you are of the world, the world will love its own. But because you are not of the world, but I've chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Did y'all see Elder Kabir's testimony about how he stands with Pastor Dow? Man, he gave a very tearful, he was crying, tears streaming down his face, man, about how I was standing with Pastor Dow. Man, there was nobody there for me in, the, in my lowest point. Pastor Dow flew up here on his own dime, never asked for a penny from me, except that one time I asked for 60000 I did that just to just let him know I'm going to pay it back. He had so many people taken away from him. And so, you know what I mean? He said, Pastor, they said that you are slow playing me. I said, what's that? Slow playing. He said, yeah, they're just waiting. they just giving it now. It's, you're going to give it a little time, a little time, a little time. Then you're going to have it all. I said, have all of what? You know, they talk about money and stuff. I said, that's all that's on these people's mind, isn't it? Mind you, we, could, we go up there and he gets offerings. They just don't know, do they? They don't know. It's all amazing. I said, so what happens after 10 years and you ain't been slow played, then what? They still going to keep their comment and their opinion and they'll keep it after 20 and they'll keep it after I'm dead and gone. They'll tell you that he's in a grave and he's still slow playing you. <laughs> I like, dang man, we giving you money to invest for the ministry, but we're slow playing you. Damn, if anything, I'm getting played. All right, so the world hates you, therefore the world hates you. Remember that the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his master. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sayings, they will also keep your sayings. So yeah, I think it's very important that y'all keep my sayings. And I want you to test and try everything that I say. So you'll know for sure that it comes from y'all. Hallelujah. That, uh, just all this is said, but it, it still doesn't change. Prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. That's still there. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak or excuse for their sin. Y'all know when Messiah came, he removed all excuses for sin. He did. And, and it's the only, you know, it's only the Holy Spirit inside of us that keep us from sinning every, every day. We can actually, it's amazing how you can live in his body, live in this world, live set apart from the people and don't have to sin every day. Isn't that amazing? The Christian church, they, they keep teaching people, well, we sin every day. I said, you're going to hell every day too. Because he just told us, I write all these things until you little children that you sin not. Hear that? Now, we all, so I got to appease you. I, ain't can't, I can't say I've never sinned. But we don't practice sin. Well, I sin every day. I said, so if you sin every day, you ain't got no problem with it, right? No, I just repent. I said, okay, so I'm going to join you in sin every day. I like your wife. So I won't go sin with her. All I got to do is repent. What? I said, see how stupid your doctrine is? That's how stupid you are. And that silly little stupid Christian church you in. Now you want to cherry pick what sin you want to be offended with. While you sinning every day. Y'all better start thinking, man. So I say that to put a defibrillator on the mind to get people to think so they can realize, look, man, where have you received this type of teaching and doctrine from? This ain't of y'all, man. It's of the devil. See, if I sin, we got to navigate with the Father. But I'm not going to just volunteer to go out to sin. Does that make sense? 
He that hated me hated my father also. Now, Galatians 3 1 says, Oh foolish Galatians, who have, look at that word, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus the Messiah have been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only would I learn of you, receive you the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. We all know we receive the Spirit by the hearing of faith because we didn't know what the works of the law was. Isn't that right? Are you so foolish having begun in the Spirit that you are now made perfect by the flesh? No. There's no way we could be perfect in this flesh. Hallelujah. The Bible doesn't tell us walk in the Spirit. Tell us walk, I mean walk in the flesh. Tell us walk in the Spirit so that you do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So be spiritual. Now, the form of bewitchment here is in false representations. See, that word that we just read earlier, bewitch, malign, fascinating, looks, says, by representations, false representations. Oh, foolish Galatians who have false, been false, making false representations to you, who have been bewitching you, who have been making false representations, which is bewitch. Uh-oh. See, we're waiting for somebody to throw some tarot cards up or a Ouija board and we think we're being bewitched. See, these, this, this, this word stuff, this sentences, this, this people prophesying from their own heart and things from their own conscience and mind, that's what Satan is using in these last days. That's exactly what you, to deceive you and draw you. Listen carefully to how Fair's definition of bewitchment is done. Y'all want to hear that? Look what it says. To speak ill of one. You mean tell me you can bewitch someone by speaking ill of one? To slander, traduce them. Look at that. To bring evil on one by feigned praise or an evil eye. That's bewitching. Huh? To charm, to bewitch. Man, these definitions sure is wrecking our, ball, our definitions of things, isn't it? In the pigs of Paula right there. It's got a left hand and a right hand. Somewhere along about one page, page 128. I recommend that everybody go out there and get that. I don't have I thought I had a picture of it up here. I may have. Get that book, Pigs in the Paula, and go over it again. So it can help put you on the right track and stay on the cutting edge of spirituality and spiritual warfare. Hallelujah. But it's given the two hands of schizophrenia up there, and it's, it's pretty detailed. Because the person who wrote the book said, this is what Yah showed me after praying and fasting. I have recommended um, a book for all you to get. There it is, there it is right there. Pigs in the Parlor. Make sure y'all get that book, man. That's a good book. That thing been out since 1973. And you know, ain't too many people that's interested in spiritual warfare anyway. Seems like we're the only ones in this nation. It's, I said, seems like. We're the only ones in this nation that's interested in spiritual warfare because we always keep it at the forefront of our minds. I don't know when we stopped wrestling against flesh, I mean, uh, wrestling against the devil, but we've been fighting the devil for a long time. And if we ain't fighting him, you rest assured he is fighting us. That you can believe. He ain't taking no siestas and breaks. He's always trying to figure out some way or somehow to get a hold of you and I. Schizophrenia. Or double mindedness, schizophrenic, or double mindedness. Now, James says in 1 8, a double minded man is unstable in just a few ways, just some of the ways. It ain't many ways. See, so a double minded or two spirited person, two soul person, is unstable in all their ways. See, being double minded. Man unstable and restless in all his ways in everything he thinks, feels, or decides. The phrase translated two minds comes from the Greek compound, I mean a compound Greek word literally to mean two souls. I mean you're operating out of two souls. Are you following? Now back to 1 Samuel 15, 23. We're going to finish this up right. We got to sin of witchcraft. Is that right? Now we're going to work our way back down to stubbornness. So rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. This is the way the father views it. Because thou hast rejected the word of Yahweh, he has also rejected you from being king. Now, stubborn to press, to push, to be insolent, displayed, pushing, arrogance, or presumption. 
over there in the Hebrew strongs to peck at, stun dull, press or urge or stubbornness. The Browns driving Briggs to press to push, to be insolent, display pushing, arrogance or presumption. Presumption. So in Ezekiel, teach get Ezekiel chapter 2. Ezekiel chapter 2. Everybody doing all right? Yes, sir. Y'all yes, learn anything today? Yes, sir. Just a little bit. Yes, sir. He should have gave you some ammo. Yes, sir. Ammo for the enemy. Also how to help recover your brother or sister out of a snare if they in one. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, <laughs> My soul escaped. Like a bird out of the snare of the fowler. That's a song too. When you have it, go ahead and read. And he said unto me. What did he say unto you? Son of man, mm -hmm. stand upon your feet, and I will speak unto you. <clears throat> and the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me, and set me upon my feet, that I heard him that spake to me. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send you to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What kind of nation is Israel? Rebellious. A, a, a rebellious nation that has Rebel. rebelled against him. Is that right? Read. They and their fathers have transgressed against me even unto this very day. For they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. I do send you unto them, and you shall say unto them, Thus says Yahweh Elohim. Now notice, he's sending the prophet along to a nation, the children of Israel, right? Not because they're doing everything good. <laughs> Y'all got something he need to say to them. And he has to use the prophet to say it. Read. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house. They are what kind of house? Rebellious. I'm asking, do you think he could possibly be talking to us too? Yes. Yeah. Just a little bit. So when we read this, we understand what was going on in Yezekiel's day, right? But we need to probably take heed to this for ourselves too a little bit. Just so we don't overlook nothing. Read on. Yet shall know that there has been a prophet among them. Well, they're going to know there's been a prophet. Come on. And you... Son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words. Through briars and thorns be with you, and you do well among scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Man, you know, if you start reproving and rebuking people, man, they're going to look at you crazy. God said Israel is a rebellious house, didn't he? Come on. And you speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. Whether they will hear or whether they forbear, you speak my words unto them. Come on. For they are most rebellious. But you, son of man, hear what I say unto you. Be not you rebellious like that rebellious house. Do you hear that? Now you, prophet Ezekiel, don't you be like that rebellious house. Come on. Open your mouth and eat that I give you. And when I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without. And there was written therein lamentations and mournings and woe. Y'all get it? That, that's not a good word. Not to Israel. And I'm telling you, I don't think that the father is, is turning cartwheels at the whole house of Israel today. You follow me? So since we're a little small remnant right here, we need to make sure that at least he, he has a people that he says not everyone has bowed their knee to Baal. <laughs> Hallelujah. So let's never forget Yah has a courtroom. Y'all remember that, right? He has a courtroom up there. We will talk more about this in the coming days, y'all's courtroom. So I hope y'all learned something today. It was very edifying.
It is remarkable and amazing when you look behind these words what comes out though. You think one way, you see what these words say, wow, 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 wow. So what is that telling us? Well, everybody need to be on guard for bitterness. That's a powerful spirit. Hallelujah. All right, we'll say 2.30, okay? 2.30, glory to the king. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Yah, my strength and my redeemer. He dismissed in a magnificent, beautiful, wonderful name of Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. Shabbat Shalom, Israel, the king is coming. Look at him looking.